So glad to be back with you again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice, and be glad in this day. I just thank God that we're able to come back, you know. As I said on last week and maybe some weeks before, time is just moving so fast. You, you look, it's one day and the next thing you know, it's another week. But this is letting us know that time is not long. God, I believe, is soon to come quicker than what we think. So we just need to be ready, be watching and waiting for Him to come. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, our lives, health, and strength. And Lord, I ask in your name to teach this Bible study, Lord. Help me, Lord, to decrease and you increase. Lord, let nothing be said, added, or taken away from your word, Lord. Let us rightly divide your word of truth. Lord, anything in our lives that's not of you, we ask that you take it away and forgive us, Lord, and help us to be strengthened, Lord, so that we'll be able, able, Lord Jesus, to go through these last and evil days, that we'll be a witness for you regardless of what the situation is. Help us to represent you. We pray and ask all these things in your blessed name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just want to... <clears throat> As always, it's, we're praying for all the sick and those who are shut in in the hospital. We're praying for those who are incarcerated in, in, in the penal system. You may be locked up in the penal system, but you can still be free in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, if you focus and give your life to Christ. i like to also give a shout out to... Uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Brother uh, Ben Lydon, I hear you on the means. Continue to recuperate. We thank God. And we've been hearing some good reports. Also, Brother Eugene Palmley, you and our prayers and thought as well. And I just wanted to mention those two because those I know that have been going through some things. But to all those, every person, we're going to have a beautiful lesson today that don't give up. Continue to have faith and God will do the healing. God will do whatever that's needed in your life. So today, with all that being said, like I said, we have a beautiful lesson and it's a lesson of encouragement. It encouraged me. And today's lesson is dealing with heal by faith. And we're going to talk of two incidents. Heal by faith. And it's taken from Matthew, the ninth chapter, uh, verses 9, I'm sorry, verses 18 to 26. Healed by faith. And you know, a lot of times, we think that, oh, well, that happened back in the day. But God is still, as I say, almost every uh, listen. He's a healer, a healer, a healer. And we're seeing evidence, even in our day and time, that God is still working miracles. Healed by faith. And I'm going to begin, and I'm going to go to uh, a little background here. And I want to say that Matthew, <clears throat> he tells about what happens. But if you go into some of the other Gospels, they go into a little bit more detail. But Matthew lets us know what is going on. Jairus, coming to Jesus on behalf of his beloved daughter. Jairus saw the administration of the synagogue at Capernaum. This was an elected position. So he had a big position, this man, that came to Jesus about his daughter concerned. He was not some little weakling. He had position, and he was a powerful one, too. Jairus was a devout Jew and leader. 
He was the father, this and this, of a 12-year-old daughter whom he loved very deeply. Jairus showed strong courage by going to Jesus because we know that, the, that most of the Jewish leaders, they didn't like Jesus. Those scribes and Pharisees, they thought they were better and they were forever trying to find an occasion to make Jesus look bad. But Jairus saw, knew, heard about this man and the healing that he could do. So he went to Jesus. Jairus showed strong courage by going to Jesus, who was hated, as I said, by the religious elders. However, because of his deep love for his daughter and his belief in Jesus, he approached Christ with humility, worship, and faith. Matthew writes a cluster of miracle narratives, one healing narrative inside the framework of another. And he did, you know, we talked even on last week, even with the storm, Jesus had witnessed and did all this stuff. And even when he went to the other side to try to get some rest, he was still confronted by the storm at sea and the disciples had to wake him up. So Jesus was very busy. People knew of his fame. And so he just didn't sit and wait. He was always busy. And then even when he tried to get away, people followed him because they knew what man of man is this. They can do all of these things. They knew it was something divine about him. First, there is the desperate cry of a synagogue ruler. That's what we're talking about, J. Harris, for the life of his daughter. And next, we're going to talk about there is a hopelessness of a woman who also had been sick for 12 years with a bleeding disorder. Both stories tell of desperation and each one can stand independent from the other. These narratives demonstrate the authority, the power, and the compassion of Jesus. His fame has spread throughout the region and thousands of people were following him because everywhere he went <laughs> he cured every disease and sickness. Today these are there are many reasons people follow Jesus Maybe it is what their friends are doing, or maybe they simply want to receive a blessing. The scribes and the Pharisees, religious leaders, so-called religious leaders, however, follow Jesus to test the validity of his being the son of David. The Messiah. Jesus was their king, but they would not acknowledge him. They were trying to discredit him and find a reason to put him to death. The Pharisees went so far as to say he cast out demons out of people by the power of the ruler of demons. But the people were saying it was never not seen in Israel. What not seen? The miracles that Jesus was doing and had performed. He sees people confused, leaderless, scattered, and dying in their sins. And he said, he was showing that I am the answer. If you only trust and believe. And we're going to begin with verse 18 of Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 18. And like I said, Matthew goes right into it. But Mark, if you get a chance, read Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 21, all the way to 
34. Those are verses that's dealing with our, today's lesson as well. And it said, While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Now this first section is dealing with compassion for the hopeless. And it's going to be taken from the verse I just read and in verse 19. And I'm going to read that as well. And Jesus arose, got up, and followed him. And so did his disciples. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying this. The leader of the synagogue came and knelt down before him. Jesus was already talking to a congregation. And this leader came because he was very heavy and hard. Because his little girl, his 12-year-old daughter, was sick and dying. And at that particular time, he thought at the point of death. And he, Jesus, he beckoned Jesus to come and see about him. And Jesus didn't say, well, I'm too busy. I don't have time right now. But Jesus said, it says that, and Jesus arose and followed him. And so did his disciples. Jesus has compassion. And you know, a lot of times we get so caught up in other things until we don't have compassion for others. We should not get so caught up in committees and other things that's really not kingdom building and neglect someone who's in need. Jesus was busy. <clears throat> As I said, wow, somebody was begging him over here. Somebody else was over here asking him for something. And you know what? He tried. And he did all that he could to cater to their needs. He's just that kind of friend. And I thank God because he had compassion on me. He still does. And on you as well. Jairus, a leader from the synagogue, he interrupts Jesus as he speaks to John the Baptist's disciples. Jairus falls down. Now he didn't come to say, Jesus, will you please help? I got a little girl that's sick. He was very distraught. He was desperate. J. Everest fell down before Jesus and makes a desperate request for him to raise his 12-year-old daughter from the dead. The father says, but if you will come and lay your hands upon her, she shall live. This is also the only reference in the book of Matthew regarding the laying on of hands. We see Jesus and his disciples immediately get up to follow Jairus. God immediately responds to genuine faith. And I thank God for that. Because he desires that we should trust and depend on him. Being interrupted and delayed by the ailing woman could have easily discouraged Jairus. And before I go any further with that, let us go to the second segment of this compassion for the helpless. Now we already got the compassion for the hopeless because Jairus' daughter, he's He's really desperate because his daughter, it's looked like she's dead. She's dead. And we're going to see yet how they had already prepared for her burial. And Jesus saw and heard the cry in his voice. The desperation in his voice, in his mannerism. And he and his disciples got up to follow him. But look what happens on his way to going to Jairus' house. And the second segment is compassion for the helpless. I 
And this next story I love, I love all of it, but this is something that really touches my soul. Verse 20 says, And behold, look, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years. Now isn't that significance? Jair's daughter is 12. And this lady has had this illness for 12. Both for 12 years. The little girl, 12 years old. It seemed like her life was over. And this lady had this issue of blood for 12 years. It seemed like her life was over too. Because she was sick. And they didn't want to have anything to do with her. Because she was unclean. Considered unclean with this blood issue coming from her. This lady of 12 years came behind him, him, Jesus, and touched the hem of his garment. 21 says, For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I will be whole. 22 says, But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good courage. Be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Just then, this is what it's saying. A woman who has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up beside him. She touched the fringe of his robe for she thought, she thought, if I could touch his robe, I would be healed. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. There's a relationship there. He called her daughter. At that particular time, like I said, when a woman uh, was going through those bleeding things in her life, and this lady had a continuous uh, bleeding in her life for 12 years, she was ostracized. She wasn't invited to things and because she was considered unclean. She probably even was ostracized from her family. She had spent all her money. She had been to doctor, the doctor, the doctor, and the doctors were still saying, I can't do anything. I can't stop this. She had no more money. That's why it says that compassion for the helpless. She had nothing else, but she had Something that was even more valuable than money. She had strong faith. She said, if I could just, this man called Jesus, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And even that, as they said it was fringes around the, the, the garment. But she touched him. And she had that faith. This is what it says. In Mark. Going to Mark. The fifth chapter. And I want to begin there. At verses 24. And Jesus went with him. Jairus. And much people followed him. And thronged him. He was touching. They was just... So it wasn't uh, just like she was the only one. A lot of people were grabbing and touching at Jesus because they knew that this was a certain man. And verse 25 in Mark of the fifth chapter says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians, she went to all these doctors and had spent all that she had and was nothing better. She didn't get any better. She spent all the money, but she wasn't getting any better. 
but rather grew worse. Isn't that the situation well, for some of us? We go to the doctor and seem like they give us this and give us that and it still don't work. But when you call on the name of Jesus, and I know that for a fact, healing takes place. Verse 27 in the fifth chapter of St. Mark says, When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, right then, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and this is what happened and Jesus immediately again knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Who touched me? Because virtue had gone out of his body because a healing had taken place not by him touching her, but by his clothing. That's some powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Now God, Jesus, his, his clothing, by her touching it, and it wasn't the clothing, it wasn't the particular clothing he had on, it was her faith. It was her faith, not in the garment, but in her faith in the man that wore the piece of clothing, her faith in Jesus. And his disciples who were with him said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thrown in thee, and sayest thou who touched me? <laughs> and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And it tells you that she was healed immediately. Because of her strong faith, she said, if I could just touch a little piece of it, I know I'll be made whole. If I can just have some time by myself and talk to the Lord, I know that he'll straighten the situation out. Whether it's sickness, death, or whatever financial, Family matters. What well, if I could just talk to God? If I could just touch heaven through the Spirit, I know that God will work it out. God hears our prayers. God hears our call. God hears our sorrow. All He wants us to do is to acknowledge that, Lord, I have the faith that you can help me to climb this mountain. I have the faith that you will help me in any situation. She had the faith that God, even in his clothing, that she would be healed, and she was. And all these people, like his disciples, said, Master, this is so many people. And you ask him, who touched you? But Jesus recognized her touch. 
because he knew that she had some strong faith. I don't know what the other people's request was, but Jesus knew that this woman's request was, I know that if I could just touch the hem of his garment, that I would be made whole. He knows I touch. He knows when we're sincere. You make him fool other people, but you can't fool God. He knows what you're doing, why you're doing it. And for us who are saved, our total commitment should be for God's glory and not for anything else. Who touched me? She had strong faith. And he did this. He did this. Now he's still on his way to Jairus' house. Because there's another beautiful miracle that's getting ready to happen. But he had compassion. And he stopped by. He turned and he looked. And he healed a woman who had been sick for 12 long years. He restored her life spiritually, and he restored her life physically. Praise God. And we get ready almost to conclude. And it says compassion for the healing. And it's taken, we're going to go from 23 to 26. And when Jesus came, into the ruler's house, Jairus, and saw the ministrels and the people making a noise. See, they were already preparing, had the funeral in focus. They already had, well, I just put it in today, they already had the flowers there. They had the, the people there crying and, and uh, oh Lord, she's gone and, and oh, she's dead. and. Oh me, oh my. They had all of that already there. Doubters. And people were making so much a noise. Because see, that's what some of those people's occupation. They was paid to do that. To, to, to cry and to, to weep and do all this stuff at the funerals. And he said, Jesus, when he got stepped into there, he said, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. Jesus said, Get out. Get out of here. She's not dead. And they laughed. Now, now isn't this funny? At first, you're crying and you're weeping and all that stuff. But then when he said, She's not dead, you start laughing. I mean, you change from one mood to another like that, that quickly? You wasn't sincere about this child's life in the first place. You were just there to be seen or to get paid. But, 25, when the people were put forth, Jesus put them out. He put them out. And he was not nice about it. You get out. Okay, she's not dead, and you're here, you're doing a hypocritical mourning, so get out. He put him out. He went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof, hereof, went abroad unto all the land. He put him out. And this is what it says. And Mark. In verse 35, fifth chapter again of St. Mark, it says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubleth? The master, 
She's already come. Thy daughter is dead. Why troubleth thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. Don't be scared. Don't be fretful. You got to believe, Jairus. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. You know, a lot of times when we're going through certain things and if God has given you something to do, leave the doubters out. Leave those who are weak because they can't stand that. Leave them out. And Jesus even told Jairus, the little girl's father, don't you be afraid. Now you got to trust me. Because I'm getting ready to do something. And you got to be strong. So he put all of those fake people out. And he didn't even take all <coughs> excuse me, his disciples with him. He took three of them. He took Peter. He took James. And he took John. Because he wanted someone. He wanted those around him who he knew had the faith. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. <laughs> And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado? Why are you making all this noise? Why are you doing all this? And weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them out, all out, he taketh the father, and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entereth into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Teletha, come I, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that Something should be given to her to eat. He touched me. Jesus put out the doubters. He put out those that could be hindering and those who would say, Oh, you can't do that. She's dead. What are you doing? But Jesus was showing even beforehand that I am the resurrection. Life is in me. And this is just a foretaste for all of us who are in Christ. Yeah, we're going to lie down this flesh and we're going to sing like we won't get up again. But we serve a God that said, I am. The resurrection. Another occasion, as we know about Lazarus, who was a dear friend of Jesus, and Jesus was a dear friend of him and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. And to this little girl, technically, by them, she was dead. But Jesus, he got her 
He quickened her back to life. Lazarus, who was dead for, I think, four days, and they told him to, you don't need to come because he's already dead. Even his body is beginning to smell and decay. And Jesus took his time. And then when Mary came to him weeping and, and, and Martha, he said, uh, I am the resurrection. Resurrection. And they told he told them he'll get back up and, and she said, Yeah, and I know when the resurrection, when you come and stuff. But Jesus reminded her, I am the resurrection. And he went to that tomb. And he called them. And Lazarus came forth. A woman who was sick for 12 years. God quickened that body from that illness. A little girl who was technically dead. And Jesus got her to come back to life. Now Jairus asked her, he said, if you would just lay hands on her. He was even telling Jesus because he was a ruler. He was used to telling people what to do. But I'm so glad that we serve a God. He said, I'm going to do it my way. He didn't lay hands. He spoke to her. And then he took her by the hand. And she arose. He had his own way of doing it. So that Jairus can say that I told him how to do it. God has his own way of doing it in his own way, in his own time. You just have the faith. A lot of times we go through things and we say, I don't know how this is going to be worked out. But I'm going to trust God and I know that he will work it out in his own time, in his own way. And it will be for the betterment. I thank God because we this clay figure, we serve a God who is our God who blew in the breath of life in each and every one of us. And he quickened our dead soul because when you're not in Christ, you are dead. You're a dead man or dead woman walking. But when you give your life to Christ, you're walking in the newness of Christ. You are a new creature. He quickens. He quickens you to life. And I thank God for these lessons. Because someone needs to be encouraged. That it looks like I'm in a bad situation. But God has a way of delivering us. Now, so going back to Jairus. He was a leader in the synagogue. He was with all those Pharisees and scribes and hypocrites. But somehow he heard of Jesus and they healed him by And he went to him. He begged, please come. My little girl. See, that was very dear to his heart. And a lot of times we get saved because situations, things have happened. And we knew no one else to call on but Jesus. But thank God we knew to call on him and he delivered us. He saved us. This woman with an issue of blood, she had done all. She had used all her money. She had been to all these physicians who were supposed to know how to fix the body. But they did her no good. So she had to call on Jesus. She didn't call on him, I thank God. She touched the hem of his garment. And she was made old. If you're not saved, and if you need a deliverance, call on the name of Jesus and ask the Lord to save your soul, to heal you. Because if you're in sin, you're sick. But Jesus is the great physician. And not only that, he is the resurrection. What a God that we serve. 
Thank God for this lesson. Because he's a healer and he's a deliverer. And I just want to conclude it. The people who laughed are put forth, put out. Like Jesus commanded for them to go away, this action is forceful. They have to be removed from the house, thrown out even. The word is also translated, cast out like demons. Because see, they would have had a doubtful spirit. They were already laughing and picking at him. So Jesus said, you know, this negativity has to go. Only then does Jesus perform the miracle when unbelief is not present. He takes the little girl by the hand and she arrives. It is touching to note that Jesus is asked to lay hands on the girl, like I said. But when he comes, Instead of the authoritative and priestly stance of laying hands on her, he instead chooses simply to hold her hand, bringing her gently back to life. There is surely a lot of sicknesses and many accidents claim the lives of people. We love at all ages. It seems we can come to turn better with the loss of someone older. But no matter how young or old the person is, those left behind experience a lot of pain and grief. Amen. We need to be aware that Jesus weeps with us just as he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus knows and feels our pain. He is with us to assure us just as he assured Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus has won the victory over death. Because of that, we can know that our loved ones live in his kingdom. And we can be reunited with them one day. So let us not grieve as those who have no hope. First Thessalonians 4.13 Let us instead Look forward to the kingdom where every tear wiped away and there will be no more death, sorrow, or pain. The news about Jesus continue to spread. This is truly the gospel, the good news. Jesus said he anointed, he was anointed to preach. It is the same good news we should be spreading today. Faith in Jesus makes you whole. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I have. God is a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a healer. And He's the resurrection. We go through things in this life. And the lady was healed from her infirmity in this life. But she had eventually had to die. Jairus' daughter was brought back to life at that particular time. But she had to die again. But the in Christ, they knew him as Lord and Savior. He said, you may be dead. This flesh may be dead, but I believe and I know that one day 
we're going to rise. We're going to be forever with him. Because he is the resurrection. He is preparing a place for each and every one of us. Those of us who accept him as our Lord and Savior. And if you have not, today is the day. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, make me. And write my name in your book of life. And anoint me from afresh so that I may be whole. So that I may be quickened. So that I may be healed spiritually. He did it for me. He can do it for you. And he's done it for so many more. And he's still the same God that's a healer, that's a deliverer. I love you all. I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. And let's continue to pray. I thank God for his compassion. When I was in a helpless situation, I thank God for his compassion. When I knew no way other on whoever to return to. Husband, mother, father, children can't help you. Only God, only God is able to help you through these situations. I pray that this help you. And until the next time, if it's God's will, I'll see you. And let's pray for one another. Like us on Facebook. Like us on YouTube so that we can continue to come and rightly divide the word of truth in your homes, on your television, through your media center, whatever way, your telephone, so that we can grow together. See you the next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.